Uh, welcome, my friends, to our lectionary podcast. And we get to do something different for the very first time here for our podcast at Concordia Theological Seminary. We're doing the unthinkable and talking about two-thirds of the Bible, otherwise known as the Old Testament. For those of you who get a chance to preach for Advent 4 and knowing where it falls this Sunday, this being a Sunday, uh, also known as Christmas Eve, this could be a little dicey. Uh, that said, you have a pretty awesome opportunity. In terms of the Bible, there are certain texts that I cover all the time. And number one on my list, Genesis 12. Number two on my list is 2 Samuel 7, the Davidic Covenant. This is an absolutely rich text that in many ways shapes most of Messianic theology in the Old Testament. Uh, that said, without further ado, let's see what happens in this pretty pivotal text within the Old Testament. So I first draw your attention to verse 1. The text is broken up a little bit, where we start out with a pretty standard naming formula. Avayhi ki yashav hamelik bebeto. A pretty standard way to start a story, and it happened that the king was in his house, and Yahweh, and note the Vav here is disjunctive, uh, but Yahweh, or perhaps now, now Yahweh had given him a uh, rest from the enemies who were all around him. I note the hey here, for those of you keeping score at home, that's a Hifil perfect from Nuach to give rest to. Pretty basic word. And then verse 2, we finally get to where the plot starts. And it happened that the king, and the king, excuse me, the king said to Natan, to Nathan, Hanavi, the prophet, uh, Re'e, Re'e, look, na, particle of politeness, look, I am dwelling in a house of cedar. Now another disjunctive vav here. But the ark of Yahweh, the ark of, our, of God, is dwelling in the midst of curtains. Uh, this word itself is relatively rare, but we, we get the idea. Things move on. Uh, Nathan talks to him, and Nathan said to the king, all which is in your heart, here note the word lave. Uh, for those, if you like uh, holiday, the nonsense of Valentine's Day, uh, lave is not where the seat of Warm and fuzzy feelings is located. If you want warm and fuzzy feelings, be giving your loved one a kidney, for a kidney card on Valentine's Day. Lave here is the sense of heart or will. Whatever is in your will, uh, go and do, because Yahweh is with you. Things get pretty standard until we get to verse 4. And it happened Balila in the night. Not any, any night, Balila Hahu in that night. And note the expression here. Vayahi uh, Devar Yahweh. And the word of Yahweh came to Natan saying. This is a pretty standard prophetic formula. And at this point, our expectations, justifiably so, is that we're expecting some sort of new revelation. And it happens. The word of Yahweh says the following, Go and, and you will say to Avdi, to my servant, namely El David, David, Ko Amar Yahweh Ata. Note, another major prophetic naming formula, Ko Amar Yahweh. Thus says Yahweh, Will you build for me that hay? Let's move to a slightly smaller pen, not cover up too much. This hay here is a good example of an interrogative hay. Will you? Will you build for me a house to for my dwelling? That's a note. We have a, an amazing number of infinitive constructs here. This is our first one. For my dwelling. Infinitive construct of yeshav. A note this tav is that peculiar feature of infinitive constructs where they drop the first yod and take on a tav. Somewhat odd. Uh, and it goes on. Historical prologue happens. Because I have not dwelled in a house from the days. And note another infinitive. That hey patak tells you it's, deal, it's an infinitive, uh, infinitive construct, a hifil, with the first common singular object suffix. And the day I brought up the B'nai Yisrael, the Israelites, from Egypt until this day. I was walking about. Uh, that's a hithpael, hithpael participle. I was walking back in a tent and in a mishkan, in a, in a tent. Uh, 
But this is one of those nice little moments where we actually do have some parallel constructions, typically not seen in pros, but Ohel and Mishkan, same thing. Now things get better. We get seven. And now this is, again, relatively standard. And now let's, through the miracles of technology, we move the text and we see what goes on in seven, in all which I walked about uh, among all of the B'nai Israel and the Israelites. Did I speak, another interrogative, hey, did I speak a word? Uh, did I speak one word to the judges of Israel whom I commanded? Note, Hifl, note the uh, PL here, Herak doubling, third hey, which I commanded to tend to to tend my people and to Israel, saying, uh, why do you not build for me a house of cedar? The text goes on, and it's a fairly lengthy text for our first foray into the Old Testament. But now let's jump ahead to verse 9, where we, get, where we start moving towards the punchline and why this text matters. And I will be with you in all which you walk, and I will and I will cut off all of your enemies from before you. The challenge with this text, and this actually goes back even to verse 2, is that what David wants to do here is to build a house of God to dwell permanently. And that itself is actually not a bad idea, and that's something we need to keep in mind. In fact, all David really is doing is remembering Deuteronomy 12, verse 10, the promise that when there be rest from the enemies, then God in other words, what's going on right here, then God would make his name dwell in one place. So many expectations, but then we have the great reversal. We've already seen bait before. House, house, house. And now we finally get into the punchline and the promise and why this passage matters so much. We'll skip ahead now to verse 16, in which we finally get to what matters. And your house. And this is the text, the piece. Your house will be established. Note the parsing here is relatively important. You got a nun here. It's a nifal. Here translated passively, a divine passive. And your house will be, and your kingship will be established ad olam. Ad olam, forever. Uh, before you. And your throne will be, Nifal participle of Kun, will be established forever. This passage leads to all kinds of things happening afterwards. Again and again we see this promise of a Davidic ruler. And the Davidic dynasty, as you know, lasts for quite some time, from 1000 to 587 BC. But this still leaves open attention. Every Davidic king should be following in these footsteps, and frankly, they don't. And they keep looking. Then the exile happens. And this text, 2 Samuel 7, is revealed and turns out to be the messianic text of the Old Testament. This promise that there would be a Davidic leader on the throne, the Emmanuel, the oh, son of David. This becomes the promise that ultimately is only fulfilled in Christ. Again and again in this text, we see echoes of, being, of, of the nations. We see echoes of David and especially David. And again, again, we see that only Christ fulfills this. In terms of preaching, that's pretty much where I would go. We have so many great options here, but probably the best preaching option would be to see this as fulfilled in Christ, which it is, and to describe what it means to have Jesus as David, as the Davidic king who will sit on his throne forever, a king whose, whose coming we will celebrate, of course, about six hours after you preach this sermon, as you embark upon those sacred hours, those blessed and admittedly long hours, as you do Christmas Eve and then Christmas Day. Enjoy this text. Hopefully you get a chance to interact with it. If not, here immediately, this is a text that you can keep coming back to. It's one of those embarrassment of riches sorts of texts. And with that said, I pray that God blesses you during these holy, challenging, glorious times as you Preach this word of a Davidic monarch, of the true king of David, to God's people who will be gathered in your congregations throughout the country and throughout the worlds. Blessed Advent, and yes, I'll even cheat a little bit and say Merry Christmas, depending when you hear this, when you hear this podcast.
Goodbye for now from Concordia Theological Seminary. I'm Professor Ryan Teets.